What's up guys, welcome back to the channel and to another weekly 3D model. This week, we're gonna be making a homemade AK-47. So let's dive into it. Now, once again, this wasn't even my plan for this week's model, but I came across an awesome piece of art by an artist named Ankur Kahl. I'm probably saying his name wrong, so I apologize for that, but he created a really great piece of art showing different weapons and attachments for different AK-47s and different types of guns. And I thought it'd be a lot of fun to create my own homemade AK-47 since it's been a while since we created a gun or weapon on this channel. Now I'm not going to lie, I kind of rushed this week's model. I was planning on making something a lot smaller that would take a lot less time, but I really wanted to make this weapon. So I decided to throw away all my weekend plans once again and create this 3D model for this week's video. Now because this whole week was so busy, I definitely cut a few corners and rushed a few things. I usually like to clean up my topology a bit more, but I'm not going to lie, I just didn't have the time to spend on this week's model like I usually do. So I just simply smoothed a lot of the pieces and didn't worry too much about the topology and cleaning things up. So I apologize in advance and I promise to have more cleaner modeling videos in the coming weeks, but for today we're just going to have some fun, try not to stress too much, and create this homemade AK-47. I also didn't have a lot of time to add narration into this week's video, so it's mostly just going to be a time lapse and speed modeling type of video, but if you're interested in seeing this in a slower pace, I will be uploading a real-time version of this to my Patreon page, along with the working files and FBX, so if you're interested in seeing any of that, you can find them in the link in the description below. Alright, so when it came to modeling this thing, I was definitely indecisive and didn't know exactly how I wanted it to look. So you'll see throughout this whole process, I jumped back to a lot of things to rework some shapes, and I tried not to get stuck on one idea to avoid dragging out the whole modeling process. So as I block these shapes out and slowly build up my gun, I try not to stay too focused on one specific piece for too long. I find if I can work a bit more loosely and not worry about getting everything perfect right off the start, just focus more on filling in the empty spaces and then come back and refine them after. I find it usually tends to come together a lot quicker and usually looks a lot better in the end. And usually if I'm stuck on a piece and don't really know how I want it to look, I'll just move on to something else and then come back to it after. Sometimes creating other objects around it helps you figure out how you want it to look and fit everything together. Now in reality, if I really wanted to make this true to an AK-47 shape or the real dimensions, the quickest way would just be importing an image plane and then blocking it out around a real AK-47 image. So there are a few reasons why I didn't do this. One is just because if I'm making a model based off of a real true size of something in real life, I want to really spend time making it pretty accurate to its true shape. So it just means it would drag out the process a little bit more and I didn't have a lot of time today. So rather than importing an image plane and spending the time just making sure it aligns perfectly and Google those dimensions, the width and measurements of some of these pieces and I can incorporate them into this model, all of that takes more time which unfortunately I didn't have, so I decided just to kind of wing it and not really base it off of anything. And it really helps me that this is a homemade AK-47, so some of these pieces I can just kind of create along the way. And reason two is just because I find it's good practice just to play with dimensions and just have fun with the shapes. A big reason why I create these videos is just to have fun and just to practice. And I find it really helps me work with proportions and figure things out along the way. And to be honest, I just have more fun modeling loosely and not really focusing too much on getting everything perfect. So a big reason why I also didn't import image planes is just to kind of have that creative freedom just to create my model however I want it to look. But I just wanted to make a note, if you were really trying to make this more accurate to a real life AK-47, I would definitely start off with at least blocking those shapes out off of a real image plane showing a real size AK-47, and then you can just customize it afterwards. Now, when it came to the texturing, for some reason, I wasn't satisfied with the materials. Sometimes with the power of Substance Painter, you can just throw on a smart material and it almost looks complete right off the start. However, this definitely wasn't the case for this week's model so the texturing took a lot longer than I originally planned. Especially those metal pieces. I just kept on changing my mind with how I wanted it to look, so I kept coming back and changing the specularity and roughness values. I just kept on playing around with things until it slowly started looking how I wanted it to. And that's really why this week's video is a lot longer than usual, so I just blame my indecisiveness. Anyways, enough of me talking, let's continue blocking these shapes out and slowly piece together this AK-47.
Ripping the wall since it felt like this, 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 this. Ripping the wall since it felt like this, this, Ripping the wall since it felt like this, 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 this,
All right, so here is a model in its finished form. Now, if you're interested in seeing the whole UV mapping process, I will upload that video to my Patreon page so you can find that in the link in the description below. But what I decided to do was break this thing up into four different groups. Now, I wasn't sure exactly how many textures I wanted to use. This wasn't going to be used in a video game. Now, if it was going to be used in a video game, I would definitely reduce the amount of textures. Probably go with just one or if it's like a, maybe a main character weapon, you could do two. But definitely keeping those textures down is important. In this case, it was just for my YouTube video, so I was originally going to go with three, but I decided just to go with four, just to maybe have a little bit more detail in some of those textures. Anyways, what I decided to do is, like I said, break this thing up into four groups for the four different textures applied. So if I open up my UV editor, I will show you how those UV shells look. So the very first group and texture was the main body, the main shape. Kind of looks like a shotgun, but I just wanted to keep the main object the main pieces as their own texture and their own group that way i can just, like i said get a little bit more resolution out of those textures now one thing i did make sure to do was reduce the size on my uv map on all those shells that weren't really in view so for example if i take this metal piece here the inside shell is just taking up a, such a small space. Now, I could have just probably deleted this, but I just wanted to have that metal look if you saw in the front or the back. So I decided to keep it, but like I said, I shrunk that down just to really take advantage of that UV space. And I can enlarge the outer UV shell that way. It can have more detail. So the second group and texture is the magazine, the handle, and the straps, little metal pieces. And the third group and texture is the front and the back, the barrel and the stock. Now, like I said, I was originally going to group the scope with this texture group, but I decided just to keep the scope on its own little map. That way I can have more detail. I wanted to add some words and some numbers on the dial here. So I just thought, why not? I could just take advantage of that extra space. But that's basically how I prepared this model. Now, like I said, I would reduce those textures if this was gonna be used in the video game. So keep that in mind, depending on how you're gonna use these little weapons or models you create. And the other small thing I did was just uh, duplicate all these objects. So when we were modeling this gun, I just created one side, but I went ahead through the UVing process and just duplicated them all over. And then I also just added a little bit of detail on this top piece up here. So basically these two magazines are sharing the same UV space, but this top piece that I added onto this side, because this one, there's nothing, there's no detail on the top. I just made, shifted those shells over. So that way I could texture one and save myself that time. Anyways, that's how I set it up. Now let's export this and let's jump into Substance Painter and we can start texturing. All right, so now we jumped over to Substance Painter and we loaded in our FBX file from Maya. And if everything looks good, we can go ahead and bake out those textures. Now, like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, the texturing process definitely was dragged out a little bit. I was very indecisive with these materials. Everything was looking a bit off, especially that little metal golden piece with those holes in it at the front. I went back to that so many times adjusting values and I ended up just switching the material completely at the end. But sometimes it just goes and sometimes it doesn't. Today it was just more of a struggle than usual, but that just means you got to keep working at it, which we did. So this whole texturing process is just a bit longer than usual and that's just a reason why I just had to play around with things a, a bit more until I was happy with how it was looking. Now, like every model I make on this channel, I basically just start by filling in those empty meshes with just any material. So I usually start off with a smart material. The smart materials are really awesome in Substance Painter. So I just basically fill in those empty white meshes with something, and then I can start adjusting things and tweaking things along the way or jump back to things. And basically I'm just trying not to be stuck on one idea and trying to get one little object looking perfect because as you build materials around that object, usually things tend to change or you get better ideas along the way. So I try not to be stuck too much on one specific idea at the beginning. Just fill in all those empty meshes and then you can start tweaking things. And usually it starts flowing a little bit better and the materials just slowly start looking better as you work on it. 
Now, once again, this is just gonna be a time-lapse speed modeling video, so I'm not gonna talk too much throughout this whole process. But if you have any questions, definitely feel free to reach out to me. Best way is probably through my Instagram or through my email. So if you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to reach out. Also, if you want to see this whole process in a real time, this will be uploaded to my Patreon page along with the FBX file and the whole Substance Painter working file. So if you're interested in seeing a more in-depth view and you want to have a more detailed view on how these materials were built up, you can all find that on my Patreon page. All right, so let's just start filling in these empty meshes with materials and we can start texturing our homemade AK-47.
So that is everything. That is the whole 3D modeling and texturing process that I did to create this homemade AK-47. A really big shout out to the artist and Kur Call for creating such an awesome piece of art and inspiring this week's video. And thank you all to all of my Patreons. I really can't thank you all enough for the continuous support. If you like this video and you want to see more 3D models, please consider hitting that subscribe button. It would really help me out and beat this whole algorithm thing. We're slowly approaching my goal of 10,000 subscribers. So if you'd like to help me get there, you know what to do. Also, don't forget to check out my website, polyrender.com. I have some merch available on there. And also, once again, if you want to see these videos in a real time pace and also have access to working files and FBX models, all of that will be available on my Patreon page and you can find that in the link in the description below. Once again, thank you all so much for tuning into this week's video and I will catch you all in the next one.